Welcome back to Nightmine, friends. And welcome back to Cabin Fever Dreams. Honestly though, is it really welcome? It's the middle of May. Everything is in bloom, we've got warm weather, June is a reality within our reach. Let's get real. It's time to finish up this season and get back to some kind of normal. So you know what? Let's end this year's Cabin Fever Dreams the same way we started. Because I Am Sophie has been wild enough in just a couple months that an update is something I'm genuinely craving. But I've also got a friend from the outside dropping in to sponsor us for this last Cap and Fever episode who brings all the impact Sophie's brand wanted to without all the horror. As you know, I'm a voice guy, and Nightmind is very much a voice channel. I've had a lot of you tell me you don't even watch my videos so much as listen to them, and a lot of you do it from devices that have Bluetooth, like your phones. Audio quality is important here, which is why I'm obsessive about it to the point of audio work being the longest part of my video making process. And because they could tell, Raycon sent me a pair of their everyday E25 earbuds. Now I've never owned a pair of wireless listening devices. Honestly, I've been on wired pairs until I got these, and the whole time I thought, yeah, wireless is cool, but I don't really need it, so it's okay. <laughs> oh, you. How very wrong you were. I'm not kidding when I say these changed my tune instantly. I never want to go back to wired headsets. The E25 wireless earbuds fit perfectly, they sync up to Bluetooth faster than anything I've ever connected my phone to, you get an immediate audio notification that they're connected and ready to go, and the sound is excellent. I've tried them out while doing chores, I've tried them out while riding a bike, and they pass all my tests. And for those who listen to music that has a kick, I know how important it is that the bass hits, and they do. If you listen to music from bands that have strong drums, you still feel it, and that's the best measure these can pass. Battery life holds up too. Six hours of continuous playtime are available from a charging session, and the carrying case itself is the charger. Look at this thing. You just plug into the back, unplug when you're ready to go, and you're off while the earbuds stay safe. And when you place them inside, they attach with magnetic pull. I could turn this case upside down and shake it, and they don't fall out. Right now, Raycon is offering viewers 15% off their orders at buyraycon.com slash nightmine for a promotional total of $79.99, available in six different colors. That's buyraycon.com slash nightmind. I'll have the link available for you in the description below. If you've ever wanted a wireless way to listen to audio, these are truly excellent. I'm dead serious when I say I never want to go back to wired headsets, and this is coming from a voice guy who cannot live without a way to listen to music wherever he goes. I love the E25 wireless earbuds and feel like they've set me free. Big thanks to Raycon for sending me a pair and sponsoring this video, as well as giving everyone viewing and listening a chance to jump on a pair at a discount. So now that we've been reminded what quality merchandise is actually like, let's get back to Miss Young, Rich, Powerful herself and see how she's holding up. When we last left Sophie, she and her cameraman Ben had been transported to what appeared to be the secret room in Lara's house, where they were faced with Plum, who they abandoned there. She was left to suffer, and now it's Sophie's turn. Mark, the techie friend from that previous episode, is now possessed, and he kills Plum, seems to kill Ben, and joins Lara in tormenting Sophie as she is stuck in a chair, all while we see flashes of the man with a hand on his face and images of Lara taking the place of Sophie. It was, in all, a pretty insane and thoroughly awesome time. From here, it gets crazier, diving into territory I never would have anticipated. The next video uploaded arrived on March 17th, with a title and description as a reflection of Sophie's announcement video, The New Queen of YouTube. We're viewing from the same perspective as the end of the previous upload, watching the video on someone else's screen. What transpires is a version of Sophie's upload that now features Lara in her place. Beforehand, we do catch something new. The young, rich, powerful logo has been inverted, even down to the name. Old, poor, weak. You'll notice in this episode an appearance by the hand of hate, but also a new character at the end, a man we don't know. On Twitter at this time, we came to see him appear as the profile picture for Sophie's account, along with a change in name. I can see you. This was his first tweet, and his first Instagram post on Sophie's account. His next tweet is a clip of the Hand of Hate with a coded message that says, Stop. Soon after, he lets the audience know that he isn't Ben, and he isn't Mark. He also warns us not to trust anyone. A video clip is attached in a reply tweet showing distortion on the page. In the comments, a user points out what followers on the Reddit immediately picked up on. Whoever is in control uses the identifying hashtag, I can see you. The monster is posting the tweets without it. This means it wasn't the new character who uploaded the stop video, it's the hand of hate. The new man tells us on March 20th, this was the first. I have more discs to play, please stand by. 
Uploaded that day was The Guide to Being Young, Rich, and Powerful, the Lara edition, mixed with new shots of Sophie's torment while captured. My name's Lara. Oh God, because that's super cringe. Is that really cringe? Should I do that again? I've never done vlogging before, but I've got my super talented friend, Ben, and he's been doing videos for like ever, and they are absolute fire. So I thought I'd just like make a little something for you guys and just about what my life is like. And it's just gonna be super fun. So first and foremost, I would consider myself myself a businesswoman. I'm smart in business. I'm also a model. <laughs> because, well. <laughs> and also the Instagram is just vibes and the free clothes are sick. Oh no. Oh my God, she's uploaded it. She's uploaded it. <laughs> That's so tragic. Wow. So I just wanna show you what it's like to be me living this hectic lifestyle as a millennial. <laughs> So here we have um, our cream leather seats. It's like a really good leather. I think it's from a cow. Um, and their skin is meant to be a lot softer, so it's really comfortable. Business is a massive word for me. It's sort of in my genetics, and I have loads of great examples to work from. This is my dad. He literally grew a million dollar empire from nothing, like literally nothing. I don't know how he did it. The frames flashing over the comments left at the beginning won't surprise you. They're images of the Hand of Hate, who makes more appearances in sudden frames throughout the video, including this shot of Lara with her dear father. The message is coming through pretty loud and clear now, if viewers hadn't caught on already. This creature is tied to the force of negativity, and Sophie was an immediate magnet for it. Now here's the question, where does Lara even come in as being involved with a monster? We dive deeper into this mystery beginning with Lars' version of the video, YRP Collection, available now. The start is just another Sophie video with Lara taking her role, and then it becomes very different. Just say it all the way through. And is there any way we can put an end to this? It knows. It knows that what I've done is horrible and that I've ruined the way that things should be. And this is my only chance. I need you to not give up on me, please. Please don't give up on me. I can't let down. I'll update you as soon as I can. <laughs> this next section is horribly loud and distorted. It seems Lara is conscious, and she's remorseful. She sent someone a load of discs to watch who might be able to help, and that must be our uploader friend in the Twitter profile picture. Now the pattern of Lara's replacement of Sophie ends, and we're shown video that presents us with a new reality, one that appeared to exist well before Sophie, who first came to YouTube on February 13th of this year. Uh, 
Um, hey guys, so this is my uh, first vlog of my new YouTube channel. I kind of wanted to create this because I'm really into beauty and fashion and uh, makeup and stuff. So yeah, I think just a whole lot of this channel is gonna be that. I also kind of wanted to address what it's actually like for real content creators and the problems and the day-to-day -day struggles. Um, so basically just saying what it's like to be me. But yeah, sorry, enough of a, a downer. Let's just get straight to it. So I'm gonna start with a few facts about myself. I'm Lara, of course. Um, I'm 22, I live in London, England. Uh, I've lived here all my life, so doing pretty well. I am an only child and I live here with my dad. Um, my mum passed away when I was three. Uh, she was involved in an accident. But um, my dad's been really supportive, even if he gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> I didn't go to university, but at college I studied biology, sociology, and English language, but none of it really stuck. So I've just started working for my dad's company now. Um, I'm thinking of maybe doing a BTEC, of going back there and doing that. Um, might apply next week, we'll see. Um, and I also have a cat. Oh, this is Tally. So she is five years old. Uh, so she's getting on now, aren't you wise girl? Um, she basically just like goes around the house eating and sleeping and tends to bring in dead things for me like birds and various rodents, so that is gross. I'm also an avid gamer, so I'm really into like RPGs, uh, puzzles, uh, strategy games, all that stuff. Yeah, I kind of, I really enjoy the kind of escape of escapism of it, if I can say the word, of just being able to come home and delve into the world of creating a family in Sims or uh, questing on Skyrim. Um, and now saying it out loud, I realize how pathetic it sounds. Um, but yeah, anyway, uh, thank you so much for watching my first video. I promise it'll get more exciting as the videos go on. But yeah, I hope you guys have a good night. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow, and yeah, have a good evening. See you later. <laughs> so my name is... Um... Hey guys, so you probably know me from school. Uh, I don't know, it could be a, hob a hobby without me having to monetize it. I'm rambling so much. Oh my god. Uh, cool. Only uh, and then we just begin my reaction video for the new Fortnite. Cool. Only uh, and then we just begin. Uh, cool. Only uh, and then we just begin my reaction video for the new You know, I'm gonna check some of the YouTube channels now and just see what the community is saying. Okay. I'm just gonna check what's being talked about here. Oh, sorry guys, adverts. Let me just get them to skip. I'm just gonna check what's being talked about here. Sorry guys, adverts. Let me just get them to skip. Um, okay guys, I think that was a pretty good first look at the map. Um, yeah, there's a lot of like new, um, just a lot of things going on there. Um, yeah, I definitely like it for the most part, but need to get better at. Um, so yeah, just like let me know what you think, uh, what you'd like to see next, and um, hit that subscribe button. <laughs>
Thank you. Bye. This video feels like a revelation and puts into perspective something Curious mentioned during the house visit with Lara. Oh, this is my room. Is this the room you do your videos in? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. I know. Off camera, she had mentioned something about filming, and now we can see that she was a vlogger herself. We can also see how this really doesn't seem to be her house from the evidence of her real bedroom. Here, the walls are white. The look is modern. In the original Lara appearance, there's wallpaper, and the room has a lot of wood. It could all be a trick of the light, but the circumstances of that first video really point to Lara having lived somewhere else. What's more, the anomalies here aren't missed by the uploader. As Lara's face gets wiped out, he catches it and replays the sequence for us. And deeper into the video, of course, we get a moment of Sophie's video as an ad. Lara2.mp4 comes next, delivered on April 4th. When the video begins, we find Lara sitting on the floor in the dark, checking her phone. She then moves to the chair and can hear impressions about what she's seeing, even though the phone isn't lit. That is dope. That is so dope. That's dope. Yeah, one sec. You don't have to freeze and know what those flashes were. Our monster, the Hand of Hate, now haunting Lara's room and wearing something white. But why is it already here? The next video is Lara doing a makeup tutorial while wearing a top very similar to what we've just seen on the Hand of Hate. This video I kind of wanted to do more of a Magicka based Skyrim video and then this happened. Basically I kind of just wanted to do one of those videos where you can see me playing whilst also the video game plays out, if that makes sense. Except without having to use OBS because like that didn't... So um, if you just go ahead and try and sync that up, then uh, in post, I'll, uh, I'll give you a hand with that later on, if that's all right. Yeah, so that was a disaster. But if that is something that you would like to see, then do let me know in the comment section and yeah, maybe I can get that organized for the next video. So today I've decided to kind of do a makeup tutorial and it's gonna be a smoky eye. And I know what you're thinking, it's been done before, but I promise this is a more bold and expressive look. So it's gonna be just super eye-catching. And you know, if it goes wrong, then I guess it could be, could be funny. <sighs> Who knows? But yeah, enjoy. Okay, cool, so let's just get right to it. Um, so what I've done first is I've kind of like primed and concealed my eyes so you can do that first and I would kind of leave doing the um, like the foundation afterwards because fall out from the eyeshadow so obviously you don't want to ruin your perfectly done foundation already if I'm... as you can see I kind of like spend a lot of time in my room I, I don't know I guess it's just kind of like I feel quite safe here um, I don't know if you guys get this but like sometimes you just wake up and feel like the idea of going out is a bit big. Not that I don't like going out, like I do. Um, it's just sometimes, I don't know, there are sometimes where, some days where you just feel like you're not gonna be great at talking to people somehow. Yeah, it doesn't really help that I live in like this tiny flat with my dad. It's a maisonette. So like I basically do have this floor to myself, which is pretty cool. Um, but I don't know. If we're getting really cynical, it kind of feels like I've been conditioned to stay in and help around. You know, I don't know if you guys can like relate somehow to that if anyone lives in a flat with their dad. <laughs> 
So my dad has started cycling to work, which, you know, he's got rid of the car, which is like, I, I do get, but it takes him 50 minutes to drive to work and that takes him an hour and a half to cycle. So like, he's barely around. And also like, I'm kind of pissed because I would use the car to go and see my friend in Oxford. Can't do that anymore. And obviously it is like, it's so, so beautiful there. Um, and I just can't really do that anymore to like take selfies or something yeah so uh thank you guys for watching um in my next videos um hang on i just got an email here from a viewer that's awesome weird timing um thanks for watching anonymous emailer looks like a playthrough request of some kind of game cool i might check that out for the next video then it's uh the guide to being young rich and powerful. Sounds like something we all need to be playing. Cool. Right, anyway, thank you so much uh, for watching. Uh, trying to remember where I was now. Um, <laughs> thank you for watching. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Please do let me know. Uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And um, yeah, hope to catch you again soon. Peace. <laughs> okay, there's a good bit here to highlight. First, Lara may be talking to the guy friend we've seen her reaching out to. It's fairly obvious to piece together that the uploader and the person she has to watch the video are one and the same, and in this moment, we can hear a guy she seems to turn to for advice. Second, she actually has things to say about her father that aren't terribly vain and quick, unlike Sophie, but does underscore a less than perfect relationship. Now, for that end piece that's really noteworthy. She gets sent an anonymous email telling her to play a game called The Guide to Being Young, Rich, and Powerful. First, she sees an ad with Sophie's content. Now she's been sent a viewer email telling her to play a game with the same title as Sophie's launch video? Are you kidding? It feels like Lara is being purposefully targeted. And honestly, it makes sense, just from a thematic perspective. Some commenters have already said it starting from the first Lara vlog. She's actually the kind of person you would watch and enjoy instead of Sophie. Lara is kind, unassuming, quiet, humble. She has a common interest that might seem uncommon. She's a self-proclaimed gamer girl who seems perfectly legitimate and sincere about it, and she's just trying to make innocent content while getting no audience to speak of outside single digits. She's not rich, she's not powerful, she doesn't seem to have a whole ton of friends and her internet influence is next to nothing. And yet, she's exactly the kind of person whose makeup tutorial was actually pleasant to sit through because she's pleasant to be with. She is the inverse of Sophie while doing essentially the same thing. Lara inspires you to have hope for her, while Sophie does inspire hate. On April 8th, the uploader shared a message from YouTube that said, spread the word, you're trending, to which he said, this is exactly what it wants. Have you been watching? Do you even know what's happening? On April 14th, our next upload appears, taking us in a direction you wouldn't believe. Um, hey guys, so thank you for watching my next video. I'm really sorry it's taken so long between videos. Um, things have kind of just been tough with my dad at work. Not to get like too into it, I think just like without having a car, uh, without having my own money, I've just kind of been like missing out on a lot of things. Um, but anyway, stupid stuff. Uh, you're probably wondering why I'm in the dark. To be honest, so am I. I've basically been getting this email over and over again. Um, to be honest, probably more than 10 times at least. And it's basically somebody telling me to do this, play this game, like a play a walkthrough thing with it. Actually, I'll just, I'll just go what it says. Uh, so they said, Yo Lara, hope you're good. I saw this game today and thought you could make a video on it. It's a game about the new queen of YouTube. You can flex a Lambo, call yourself a businesswoman, spend your dad's money, love your content, bro, play in the dark. Um, yeah, it's been anonymously sent um, and I've got this link up here. So why not? Um, so yeah, thank you for sending that in, anonymous emailer. You're probably probably my only viewer to be honest so <laughs> appreciate that um yeah so why not let's just get into it this isn't a headset this is a hairband to keep my hair up my face 
got some creepy music here. Really creepy. Yeah, the guide to being young, rich and powerful. Stop. Oh, yeah, stop. I am Sophie. Oh, uh, young, popular, talented. Something weird is glitching there. I am a friend. Something keeps glitching. Oh my god, uh, a daughter. I don't know why that keeps... A sister. It just said open on the... And it might look like I got it pretty easy. But this, something keeps glitching between the, all these crazy things. Private jets, fast cars, beautiful friends. This does so creepy. They make, they made me think. Am I happy? Oh, when you're in the middle of a hurricane, you don't get to stop and look around and realize. It's like a girl in the background or something. Am I being real? Am I being... I feel nervous. <laughs> Me. Okay, there's clearly just like a girl flashing again on the back there. Okay, so we've got... So it says, I'm Sophie, is that really cringe? Should I do like that again? I've never actually uploaded a vlog before, but my good friend Ben has been making videos for like ever, and they're absolute fire. And then the little person is walking down, which must be Sophie. Lara continues going through the pixelated motions of Sophie's introductory video, sometimes running into bits of additional information or changes. Looks at phone and sees a picture of a decapitated horse. She's uploaded it, that's so tragic, wow. That's really weird. Oh, she says owner at the top. Decapitated horse. You don't want to go there. I'm so happy. Where don't I want to go? This is the library. There's like so many super old books from all of our ancestors and things, so. It's not, it's like not really my vibe, but dot dot dot. Okay, so I guess I can look around this room. Ben's just following. There are so many old books on the shelves, Cicero and Homer. You read a passage. Okay. Verily, she hath twelve feet all dangling down, and six necks exceeding long and on each a hideous head, and therein three rows of teeth set thick and close, full of black death. Heavy. <laughs> oh, the music stopped. It's just like pulsing. Somehow creepier. That's really weird. The passage read by Sophie pertains to Scylla, a monster of Greek mythology that sat on the side of a body of water opposite Charites, another monster. Scylla was said in certain myths to have once been a beautiful nymph cursed to take on its form, and in older times there was a saying, between Scylla and Charybdis, which meant choosing between the lesser of two evils, as the body of water wasn't wide enough to sail down the middle and totally avoid either danger. In Homer's story, the hero, Odysseus, chooses to sail closer to Scylla because Charybdis could sink the whole ship. They manage to pass Scylla, but not before she catches and devours six members of the crew. There's another story about Scylla, however, which may fit better here, and it's found in Ovid's Metamorphosis. There once was a fisherman who became a god of the sea and fell in love with Scylla, but because of his fish-like appendages, she was disgusted by him. The fisherman turns to the sorceress Circe, asking for a love potion, but Circe falls in love with a sea god, and failing to win his love, poisons a pool where Scylla bathed, turning her into a monster. Interesting reference, isn't it? I don't know where I can go in this place. The flowers smell like rancid meat and stomach acid. That's horrible. <laughs> Something glitched again. I don't know what it was. Nature like really makes you feel at one with yourself and stuff. Like, it just makes me like super chill and like meditative. Just looking at plants and grass and like dead pigeons. <laughs> oh, gross. 
Sophie's disappearance and reappearance here in All Rain, looking blood-soaked, seems reminiscent of Stephen King's Carrie, doesn't it? She was an object of hate, too. Under hell. Okay. Where am I going now? So here we have the cream leather seats. It's from a human, and their skin is meant to be a lot softer, so it's really comfortable. What? Who wrote this? This is my dad. Shows photo of sin as being burned at the stake. He literally grew a million dollar empire from nothing, like. What? This is so weird. Literally nothing. I don't know how he did it. I, I don't know either, Sophie. We also have two TVs. They're a bit small, but. They were screaming. Oh, that's really horrible. Yeah, it's a bit shit. She's, she's screaming, let's go. I'll show you the windows now. It's like complete blackout, so when we're on a long flight, at least I can get to sleep. Ugh, they're a bit stiff like a corpse. I need to get my dad to fix that. What are all these themes of death? I don't... My mum is fit, like she is literally on fire. That's a weird thing to say about mum. Is it? Ben looks behind Sophie in horror. Oh no, I'm scared. What's he seen? Don't be a pervert. She was a supermodel back in the days. I really appreciate learning that from her. Why has Ben walking away? It's, oh shit. It's like literally impossible to fall out of them. They like clip in so well. Like, I'm not going anywhere ever again. Oh, and now it's shaking. Oh, the shaking heart. It's really weird. It just crashed. It's happening. Okay, and now we're in... Uh, we're in a gym thing. Something that says powerful in your body, you can be powerful. I can't read the text. That's... Uh, you're going to fall. Show me. Show, show me what? It's gone black again. The guy between young, rich, and powerful. Laura's playthrough continues in the following video. Who are you? Ben, don't film me. I got no eyes. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be an interesting day because we're doing a money ch challenge. The whole day I have this £10 note to spend. Do you think I'll spend it all? I don't know what it wants me to do. Um. I want you to answer my question. Um. Okay, maybe I can do that if there's somewhere to click. To move the game. Quit, Laura? Yes, one. What? Oh. Yes? <sighs> no, it will be fine. Ten pounds is a lot of money. It's like ten thousand pennies. Today is also the launch of my fashion day for a while. Yeah, I think it's just really versatile stuff and it goes with everything. But the most important thing for me is what it stands for. Like even if you weren't wearing orange, you can just see orange. I've got a lot of blacks in my collection because my colour is just black. Laura, your colour will be black too. So this is our studio for today. We were meant to be in the big one, but my manager booked us into the wrong room. So we're gonna have to make do with this one. Lara, should we make do with this one? Um. Yes. Guys. It's annoying because I had these really big plans where I was gonna be like, 
running around in front of this massive white backdrop. <laughs> it's about how you express yourself and who you are that really matters. Lara, who are you? I... I'm Lara. So what we're gonna do today is shoot a bunch of dope stuff to make an ad for my clothing line which should be ready by the time this video comes <sighs> Where are you, Lara? I'm at home. Where is home? <sighs> I think it's all about success and success is power like without them. I won't be doing what I am today. I take a quite spiritual approach to everything in life. <laughs> Lara, do you take a spiritual approach to everything in life? Um not everything? Will you take a spiritual approach to everything at love? Okay. Let's hone in on this for a moment. I think it's more significant than it appears. We have very purposeful gaps around something spiritual that breeds success and power, and without it, Sophie wouldn't be doing what she is today. Keep an eye out for more hints dropped under that theme. What? It's not ten pounds now, is it? Oops. <sighs> Looks like you were right. Hey Laura! I'm super annoyed today's challenge didn't go as expected, but you're gonna do it again and I'm sure it'll go a lot better. <sighs> Hold on. You're going to do it again? Was that the line from the original video? Hey guys, so I'm super annoyed today's challenge didn't go as expected, but I am going to do it again and I'm sure it'll go a lot better. Okay, that's a change. The game is acknowledging now that Laura's future is a replay of Sophie's and it's using a distorted shot of that cell phone video. Wow. Alright, let's see this through. They all be wrong. Thanks for watching our shoot today, guys. We're just gonna hop up to Europe now and get some more shots by the sea. See you later. Here we go. So if he laughs and splashes water towards Blob's lifeless corpse. How do you like this place, Lara? Come on, Lara, speak up. How would you like this place? You're not what I'm saying. I'm waiting for your daddy to come home. <laughs> what is this? Don't be scared, Lara. Remember positivity, positivity, breathe. Don't understand. <laughs> Who are you, Laura? <laughs> Listen to me really carefully, okay? You need to stop playing that game. You've, you've just you've just got to stop playing the game immediately. Don't don't go on it. Don't play it anymore. Um, send it over to me, and I'll I'll try to deal with it. That voice at the end, that was definitely the guy from before that Lara called, and the end message is clear. The paranormal force at work is aiming its sights at Lara's friend, the uploader. This becomes extremely clear when the next upload arrives, titled, I Can See You Too. The video opens with a shot of the man from Twitter, the uploader, and then switches as fast as it can to a guy dancing in his room, seemingly getting drunk. He's on webcam, but it's clear he doesn't know he's being spied on. 
After a bit, he stops and talks to the plush flamingo, and his face reveals him as the uploader and Twitter presence. You alright, mate? Yeah. I'm fine. Thanks for asking. Smashing it. As you can see, I mean, I'm in a room full of flamingos, man. What's, what's happened? Do you, do you want to know why I did it? Why I covered my whole fucking room in flamingo wallpaper, fl flamingo plush toys, flamingos on the fucking headboard over there? I'm sure you will know, mate. I'm sure you will know. Flamingos, like yourself, are supposed to keep you safe in the eye of a hurricane. Where am I now? You know? Drinking this fucking shit beer, talking to you. You don't you don't really talk back, do you? You don't really make much of a response, but I broke my fucking glasses, mate. I popped the lens out. Oh, forget about it. Do you know what? Do you know what else bothers me about all this, right? I spend all my time trying to help people. The message like, oh, can you help me with this? I'm like, oh, yeah, no, I'll, 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 I'll love, I'll help you. I'll help you. I'll whatever you want. I'll help you, free of charge. You know, where's it got me? in a room full of flamingos for some reason, you know, obviously smashing it, but come on, this is ridiculous, mate. And what did I expect? You know, you can't go for a drink, but I've got to be around to help you. You're not free to go for a drink with me, but as soon as, you message me to help you out. I'll, I'll, I'll jump. I'll jump to do it. I'll, I'll gladly do it. But no, you can't go for a drink because I'm a fucking pathetic loser. Oh, what do you want? It's fucking ten to three in the morning, mate. Right, not picking that up. Not gonna pick that up, mate. Nah. Nightmare. Honestly, ten to three in the morning. I'm trying to have a fucking drink. Just relax for five seconds. I am fucking lay down to relax for f five seconds. Oh, for fuck's sake! What do you want now? All right, Simon, what are you up to? I'm smashing it, mate. When you finish smashing it, I've got something I think I need your help with. For fuck's sake. I've got something I think I need your help with. This is what I mean, mate. It's it's always them getting asking to help me, asking me to help them, isn't it? All right, mate. What have you got? An absolutely mad malware, some sort of data digging code hidden inside a game. Do you want to have a crack at it? <sighs> Alright mate, send it over. Thanks, mate. Let me know if you need a hand of anything. Oh, come on. It's a bit rich, isn't it? Oh, can, can you help me with this thing? Also, you know, let me know if you need help helping me with this thing I want help with. It's, it does, I know, it doesn't make any fucking sense, does it? 
Right. Okay, will do. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mark. Thanks a lot, mate. Data digging, right? Data digging. All right, then. Come on, then, Mark. Let's see what you've just sent me now. Right. The Guide to Being Young, Rich and Powerful. It's a, it's an interesting hook. <laughs> Yo, Lara. Hope you're doing all right. I got sent a game today and I thought you could make a video on it. It's a game about the new queen of YouTube. Unbelievable. So to clarify about what you just saw, this man is definitely our uploader and Twitter user whose face is in the profile picture. His name is Simon, and he's Lara's friend, the one she asked for help in one of her vlogs. He also happens to be friends with Mark, the techie friend of Sophie's who became possessed. And after Mark passed the game on to Simon, he passed it on to Lara under an anonymous email. Why? Probably because he was drunk and angry about someone saying they were too busy to get a drink with him even though he was always there to help them. And from the way he talked about Mark's sudden messages, it wasn't just Mark he was alluding to. We have a timeline here now, and it makes it all more incredible and a bit more baffling. Somewhere along the line, Mark, the one-off techie who Sophie called for help out of the blue, like Laura did with Simon, happened to come across a game with data-digging malware inside, and somehow it was all about Sophie's videos. He sent that to Simon, and Simon, being resentful, sent it over to Laura. Then he seemed to keep on trying to convince her to do it, sending more and more anonymous emails. And when she did play, it effectively locked her in as a victim of the Hand of Hate. She called Simon, crying, confused, and scared, and he said he would help. Now, why did Simon truly do this? Was it all just a way of saying, screw you, you didn't get a drink with me? Was he hoping that data-digging malware would empty contents of Lara's computer in his lap? Did he hope she would come running for help and he could play the White Knight? One thing's for sure. He knows he screwed up. Badly. On Twitter, he wrote, I'm so sorry, Lara. Are you still watching, Lara? Are you still here? Please talk to me. Please answer me. I will make this right. And then, shortly after, stop. On Instagram, a video was uploaded showing Sophie's corpse, clips of Lara, and a shot of Simon with the distorted phrase, Can't stop it. A coded message came with it, which said, I'm Sophie, of course. Um, I'm 22. I live in London, England. Uh, I've lived here all my life, so doing pretty well. I'm an only child and I live here with my dad. My mom passed away when I was three. She was involved in an accident, but uh, my dad's been really distant even if he gets in my head sometimes. Do you recognize this? It's Laura's dialogue from her first video. I'm Laura, of course. Um, I'm 22. I live in London, England. I've lived here all my life, so doing pretty well. I am an only child and I live here with my dad. Um, my mum passed away when I was three. Uh, she was involved in an accident. But um, my dad's been really supportive, even if he gets on my nerves sometimes. <laughs> Notice the change? That ending. My dad's been really distant even if he gets in my head sometimes. This text is apparently from Sophie's perspective, but it's a take on Lara's video. This brings up something I've been considering as a possibility during these recent developments. What if Sophie was never actually the girl presented in her vlogs? What if she was just like Lara at first? That seems to be a possible interpretation of this message, and we know that Lara, when possessed, literally replaced Sophie in her own footage. If we're dealing with something powerful enough to do that, then maybe it's powerful enough to do this on a cycle. A constant chain of infection. Something that didn't start with Sophie, but just caught her up in it. It can breed, just like the game said. Think about it. 
Where did Sophie come from? Nowhere, right? Just like Laura's sudden takeover would be seemingly from nowhere if we hadn't been watching the events that happened to Sophie. And if it's not a cycle, if it's not something that chained its way through Sophie and then hit Laura, we can at least say the groundwork is here for Sophie's father being something sinister, if the game is anything to go by. Or maybe the Hand of Hate is assuming the father role for her too. There are a lot of references to sacrifices and evil deals in the game, and as Laura said, a theme of death. Everything presented as Sophie's world in the game is the product of her father's evil actions, and this text from the Instagram video underlines the concept about a father playing a powerful role. Something irks me though, and I'm sure we're going to see the results soon enough as we hang in there. But for the moment, let's highlight this. How did Mark ever come across this game? He wasn't even in the picture for Sophie until Laura had been so deeply infected the investigation video occurred. Was he watching Sophie's content just like Simon watched Laura and became vindictive? Did he make the game and start this whole cycle? I'm not sure I'm ready to believe that because the game is paranormal. But it's possible that was Mark's doing too, and he was the first to finally succumb to the hand of hate as a result. But wait, there's more. In the midst of finishing up this video, again, an update appeared that rocks the whole picture and draws us deeper into the mystery. It's also an update that isn't for the faint of heart. If you're the kind of person who can't stomach some gore, especially in the vein of serious self-harm, this is going to be rough. And if you're the kind of person who wants to see the next level of horror taken in this project, this is going to be wonderfully brutal. You've been warned. Now, let's take a look. Are you being you? Uploaded May 16th. We open with a video clip montage that's similar to what was posted on Instagram, with a few interesting shots. The Hand of Hate wearing that white outfit we saw in Lara in a vlog, which also seems like the outfit Sophie wears in a shot immediately following. Then he wears a white and pink outfit, which is revealed to be Sophie's in the next shot again, from one of her early videos. We get some familiar sights after that, and then a selfie between Lara and the Hand of Hate. Plum also shows up briefly, lips bleeding. Now, for the main portion of the video. Hello? <gasps> Hello? Are you there? Hello? 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 Who are you? Hello? Sophie, young, popular, talented. I am a friend, a daughter, a sister. What do you want? What do you want? <laughs> Private jets, fast cars, beautiful friends. No, oh, I want. I don't want any of that. When you're in the middle of a hurricane, you don't get to stop and look around and realize, am I being real? Are you being you? Moving on as backup, <laughs> detective, let's brief. You know, I, I've got like some really tight lemonade downstairs that I make for you guys. Do you not want to try it? Elementary, my dear Watson, back me up. <laughs> no, no! Can you just go on the Let me just go down the Okay. Calm down, yeah? <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Did you catch all that audio? It was the argument in the hallway outside of the closed room in Lars' house from the investigation video. The insinuation here is beyond expectation. Laura, the real, old Laura, was in the room, while a false or future Laura possessed by the Hand of Hate was out there showing Sophie and Plum the house. 
And if this seems impossible already, let's increase the amount of evidence for how wild this is. Lara, in this video, appears to be wearing precisely what she had on at the end of her gameplay. She goes through the game, is terribly upset, calls Simon, and now it seems we're shown what happened after the phone call. This happened the very same night. And when did she begin recording that gameplay? July 11th, 2019. Plum and Sophie went to visit Lara in a video posted on March 5th, 2020. And we can trust the events in Sophie's timeline are in lockstep with her upload dates because of her response to Leon Lush. That alone proves that Sophie's vlogs occurred in live time, which makes this moment an absolutely baffling time skip or an echo from the future. Something else did click from this upload, however, since it brought the idea of Lara's house investigation and the former vlog of Lara into the same picture. She absolutely did have a cat. We see the cat in her first vlog. Yet in the future, why RP Lara doesn't even know she has one? The idea that this wasn't actually Lara's house is supported by the notion of the bedroom that we have seen, but what if it really is this closed off room we've been witnessing in the vlogs? If it's all the same house after all, and why RP Lara claims that she doesn't have a cat, does that mean it's not even a future Lara, but instead a form of doppelganger? Think about it. We're facing a serious recurring theme of who you are versus who you want to be or think you are. It's all about identity, the real versus the fake, the online image versus the actual person. That's what Sophie's whole setup was about in her intros, even if she didn't follow through. Is it possible that the Lara we've been seeing in the TakeOver arc isn't even Lara, but a warped mirror image? Ah, <laughs> this is tough. I love this immensely, but it is tough to figure out the angle. We're getting there, that's for sure. As for the rest of what we know now, it's clear that buyers of YRP merch are the victims of the self-harm sections. Even the person with the pink bag, since we can see that was Sophie's packaging from an Instagram post in early February. Simon himself confirmed it all on Twitter. Those poor people. Their admiration was misplaced. Then we have this update on Instagram, showing the pool of blood and the joystick. Remember to snap a pic of you in your YRP merch. And this next part is unexpected, or maybe the creators were playfully hoping for it, but it seems a bunch of you actually responded to that call under the YRP merch hashtag with Photoshop versions. Which is the only type you can really get, since, you know, the site is literally not a real shop. But hey, praise to all of you. That is fun and very clever. Now, let's not go stabbing ourselves in the eyes or anything like that, okay? Especially since the account holder rolled out an Instagram story with all those pictures edited, scratching out or crossing out the eyes on each person. That's intimidating, to say the least, and as much confirmation as we'd want about what's happening to the in-story fans of Sophie who actually did buy YRP merch. Why is the force and control of Sophie's channel and brand doing this? We could make a few guesses based on theme, but I feel like it's too early to accurately speculate. We know how malicious it is now, and how thoroughly controlling. That much has been established, and there is surely so much more to see. Except for this one guy. And this one too, of course. This is weird. Wonderfully, awesomely, terrifyingly weird. You really couldn't have told me a while back that this would include an evil PC game moment. I wouldn't have entertained that idea for a second. But here we are, with the creators of I Am Sophie impressing us beyond belief again and doing something totally unexpected in the best way. I don't make updates this soon for any series, but I Am Sophie warranted one. This has gotten so nuts, and I love it. I'm not sure where we're going next, but sitting down to watch new updates as soon as I get the notification has been something I really look forward to. It's thrilling, really, getting a notification for this now on Twitter or YouTube. And if you aren't subscribed or following, I recommend you take care of that right away. There's more to come, and it deserves an active following. Ah, <sighs> you know what? I feel awesome ending this season's Cabin Fever Dreams this way. I Am Sophie gives me life, man. It gives me hope. It makes me feel, legitimately, that this is an art form and a field of creativity that will always find new ground, and it will always roll out some crazy awesome story that revitalizes the love and enthusiasm. I always know the worth of unfiction and online storytelling, but it's another thing entirely to see an active project that makes me feel it every time they upload. We have something truly special here, and I Am Sophie shows it. So first, a major thank you to everyone involved in I Am Sophie. Thank you for putting together a jaw-dropping, enthralling project. Thank you to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Thanks to all of you for watching. 
And thanks to my supporters on Patreon, who make it possible to leap on new uploads and get my Sophie fix whenever it appears. Patreon is what empowers Nightmine and keeps it running at all times. And you can help keep the channel around and myself covering new content for just $2 a month, which gets you into the community, provides access to exclusive content, and puts your name in the end of all major videos, like you'll see in just a moment. That's all for now, everyone. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and like the handiest monster we've seen in a while, I'll be showing up again real soon. Thanks for joining me for this wild season of Cabin Fever Dreams. Take care, and sleep tight. <laughs>